The day started with a certain excitement for 12,000 people, among them Major Brian Knight, who was to pilot an F-117, a Nighthawk, at the Chesapeake Air Show. There was no stiff wind, just a bit cloudy. It was 919-7, September 4th. Everything was going as expected, but everything changed in a blink. The unexpected happened. At about 3 p.m. with approximately 11,000 pounds of fuel aboard, crashed into a house about 100 feet from the water of the Chesapeake Bay, near the Glen Martin State Airport. It was making its third and final pass of the airfield at the Chesapeake Air Show in front of 12,000 people and was preparing to return to its base when the crash occurred. First, the pilot did a straight and level pass at 400 knots. Next, a straight and level pass at 300 knots and 500 feet to give those attending the air show a better look at the F-117A Nightwalk. The final pass was a 45 degree arching pass at 318 knots and 600 feet providing a plan form view of the aircraft. Opportunity for pictures. Major Brian Knight, who was piloting, luckily safely ejected and was taken to Malcolm Grove Medical Center for treatment of minor injuries to his neck and back and for observation. He was released the next day. Knight is an instructor pilot in the 7th FS with more than 2,077 fly flying hours, including 500 in the F-117A. The aircraft had started a 15 degree climb from the 318 knots, flyby at 600 to 700 feet. When the left outboard 11 made several large deflections up and down, the oscillations deflected the left wing, which broke off 2 point feet in board of the 11. The aircraft rolled 90 degrees left within 0.8 seconds, then sharply pitched into a high angle of attack. A second later, the main landing gear was visible in the down position, probably due to high loads of loss of hydraulic pressure. Under 3 seconds, lapsed from the start of the large 11 oscillations to the gear being down. After the F-117A pitched into a high angle of attack, it appeared unstable and out of control. The aircraft began to tumble, the pilot ejected, and the plane hit the ground in a fireball and large cloud of black smoke. Andy Konkowski said that he was watching the show from a small boat near the shoreline and immediately went to the scene of the crash and spoke to the pilot. He said he was truly sorry about what had happened and said he tried to pull it out. Konkowski said he wanted to land this thing in the water but couldn't. He said everything was fine until he started to make an incline and at that point he realized the rear wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. Four people on the ground, one man and three women, sustained minor injuries, said the captain with the Baltimore Country's Fire Department, Steve Grissel. When the aircraft exploded on the impact destroying a house, a garage, and two motor vehicles, and damaging two other homes, Grissel said. Let's also hear what happened inside the cockpit from the pilot himself. It was a beautiful day to fly. Knight said in his first interview since the September 4th crash, I thought it was over and I'm on my way home. In an instant before his F-117 A Nighthawk began falling apart above thousands of people, Major Brian Knight had no cause for worry, having completed the last of the three scheduled flybys above the crowded air show in Maryland. The 12-year Air Force pilot ascended into the blue sky, leveled out at 10,000 feet and turned south toward Langley Air Force. Without warning the plane, scheduled with a pretty rapid vibration and veered sharply to the left. The violent acceleration jerked at night and G-forces pinned my head down and forward. All I could see was the lower part of the instrument plane. I thought maybe I had a mid-air collision. Knight had no way of knowing that his stealth fighter, one of the most sophisticated aircrafts in the world, was disintegrating around him. The aircraft was rolling right, 
The nose was pitching around. My impression was that the aircraft wasn't moving forward. Looking outside the cockpit, Knight saw only land and water, but he knew where the people were, he said. That was my only concern. I realized there was a good chance the aircraft couldn't be flown out of this. Working the stick and throttle, Knight fought the plane's motion. As the aircraft descended, he struggled to guard it towards water, he said. For that, some have called him a hero. Defense Secretary William Cohn commended Knight in his speech for staying with that aircraft until the very end. In retrospect, Knight is unsure if his efforts accomplished anything. I don't think my control inputs had an effect, Knight said. Five seconds before the plane crashed and exploded, he ejected. That was probably the hardest decision I've ever made in my life, he said. I dreaded having to pull those handles. I realized I had to get out right now or I may not survive. As he parachuted to ground, Knight saw the plane descend through trees, land in the front yard of a residence and explode into a fireball. I felt I headed for the fireball. As fate would have, I got blown a little bit left of where the fire was, said Knight who touched down about 115 feet from the burning wreckage. Knight suffered only minor injuries from which he has recovered. The 36-year-old pilot insists he is not a hero. Absolutely not. He said I was doing exactly what I was trained to do. Every member of my squadron would have done the same thing. No way I am a hero. The real heroes are the people who endangered themselves when they rushed to his aid, Knight said. They were concerned if I was alright even though I had just sat an airplane in the neighborhood, he said. The crash has not dampened Knight's enthusiasm for flying or his faith in the F-117, he said. It is an outstanding airplane. I really like to be flying it right now. I have a lot of faith in the aircraft and the whole F-117 community. Nor will the recent spate of military crashes unnerve other pilots, he predicted. No pilot gets in the jet and thinks about crashes. That's fatalistic. We're pretty positive people, he said. I want to go back to flying and being an instructor. And about the cars. At December 22, Issue of Aviation Week reported that the final accident report stated that four missing passengers caused the crash and required inspection of those fasteners was missed six months earlier. The report found that the maintenance record of the 49th FW were incomplete, that the fasteners inspection was not accomplished due to contractual and budgetary constraints, and that no group was tracking whether required time complaints directives were being completed by the due date. The missing fastenders helped attach the Elvon hydraulic actuator to local wing structure. Their disappearance reduced actuator to 11 stiffness, which earlier had been found to cause 11 wing flutter. The actuator attaches to a spanwise Brooklyn Bridge, IBM that transfers the load to the ribs. The actuator bay is accessed by removing an upper wing skin panel. The upper and lower caps attach to the ribs with L barricades and the vertical web attaches with T barricades. The L barricades are attached to the upper cap with one taper lock and four high locks fasteners. The double hides, the four high locks and these were missing. Evidence showed that three L barricades and both T barricades were broken, allowing the assembly to move. In the January 26 issue of Aviation Week, the following letter was published. The non-critical inspection to look for and result in correction of loose fasteners is a depot task to be uncooperated over four years. It was being tracked correctly by Lockheed Martin Skunk Works and 49th Fighter Wing Managers, but the investigation turned up incorrect date normally used for smaller jobs, which can be done in the field. We plead guilty to minor paperwork confusion. We also plead guilty to making a Brooklyn Bridge doubler plate than the quickly fixed 
a potential flutter problem, but which is tedious and awkward to replace. Funds for redesigning the bridge have been in queue for some time. The fasteners that were missing were not removed at the same time as the doubler plate. Their absence was due to a mistake made almost two years ago. The successors of the F-117A are in piloting and maintenance. Everyone in the program is making sure mistakes are not repeated. Well, we're going to analyze F-117 crashes and also other fighter jets which have had an accident. So by subscribing and turning on the notification, you can stay tuned. And I hope you all have enjoyed. Peace.